I will be introducing our theme for this year, 2023. But bago tayo dumako doon, ay let's just have a brief summary of 2022. No? Kung ano yung mga pinag-aralan natin. And if you would remember, our theme for 2022 uh, ay yung Great God, Greater Things to Come. That's our theme for 2022. Ano? And we began the year by focusing on the greatness of the person of God. Uh, tinignan natin yung glory, yung majesty, yung holiness, yung supremacy ng ating Panginoon, no? Uh, in the series entitled, Behold Our God. Alala niyo yun? No? Pinag-aralan natin yung uh, account na kung saan binigay ng Panginoon yung Ten Commandments uh, to the people of Israel through Moses, no? na kung saan uh, he made his that self-declaration and sacred demonstration of himself, of his power, of his supremacy. And uh, yun yung naging basis na kung saan he uh, gave also those serious demands or commands, no? yung Ten Commandments, uh, kaya pa parang ano, mabigat yung commandments na yun dahil mabigat ang ating Panginoon, great ang ating Panginoon. No? So, uh, if you would summarize that series that we looked into, no? I, uh, ito yung parang isang summary statement na makikita natin. Uh, can we read it all together? Ready? Begin. God is supreme and He is absolutely worthy of our absolute reliance and piety. Our faith and obedience or allegiance sa Kanya, no? According to Arthur A.W. Pink, there can be no progress in divine things until there is the personal recognition that God is what? Supreme. Okay? That He is to be feared and revered. That He is to be owned and served as napakahalaga po niyan. If you want to see a great progress in our Christian life and even in the ministry as a church, no? yung recognition natin personally ng greatness ng Panginoon ay mahalaga yan. Yung supremacy ng Panginoon dapat ma-settle first into our hearts. We cannot expect great things from God if we don't uh, recognize that our God is a great God. Okay? And He is, sabi nga dyan, na worthy. Okay? He is absolutely worthy of our faith and service because He is a great God. Amen? God is worthy. Amen? Amen. Parang hindi kayo ano, agree. Ah. God, is God worthy of our faith and service? Amen. Is God worthy of our all? Amen. Right, no? Then, secondly, uh, if you would remember last year, sa later part, no, sa second half, we focus on the greatness of the plan of God. Okay? Na kung saan, yung series natin, yung The Church of Christ in the Last Days. I, I believe, baka medyo mas fresh pa sa ating memories yung series na yan, ano? Na, uh, I hope it's clear to us that we are living in the last days. Right? Kumbaga yun, sa, sa, sa plano ng Panginoon, sa human history, nasa last stage na tayo. Okay? This is the last days. And sabi nga natin, we are living in the last days of the last days. Ibig sabihin, ay ano, the end is about to come. Okay? There is an end to everything. Sabi ng salita ng Panginoon. And that's when Jesus Christ would return, He would come again, and he would reign as king forever and ever and establish his kingdom. No? So, mangyayari at mangyayari yun. And nandito na tayo sa final stage. And the reason why Jesus Christ established the church, okay, the reason why he allowed it to expand is because he was, he is, and he will use his church. Right? In order to accomplish his plan of redemption for the entire mankind. Okay? So, in other words, uh, ang, ang kalooban ng Panginoon or nais ng Panginoon or plano ng Panginoon na gamitin yung church. Okay? Pag sinabi nating church, sino yun? Okay? It's the assembly of believers. So, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have been truly saved, no, and you believe, you receive the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are part of His church. No? And ang nice ng Panginoon, gamitin tayo ng makapangyarihan in these last days. Kaya sabi ni Paul sa Corinthians na we are ano, ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong ano? Meron tayong mission. Right? Sabi mo sa katibi ba, may mission tayo. Uh, right? And that's true to every believer, every disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, hindi lang para sa mga pastorian, para sa mga leaders, or some special kind of people uh, sa ano no sa may spiritual sabi nating may rank may rank ano but it's for every believer we all have a mission to fulfill kaya 
hindi ano dapat hindi tayo ano lukewarm sa Christian faith natin. Remember that's the Laodicean church, they were lukewarm, no? Hindi pwedeng maging lukewarm tayo because uh, may gustong gawin ang Panginoon in us and through us. And the uh, mahalaga na yung sabi nga natin, ang dalawang bagay, yung preeminence ni Christ uh, sa buhay natin ay mag mangyari yon. And at the same time, yung power ng Holy Spirit mag-work in us and through us. Because that's the only way we can accomplish yung uh, kalooban ng Panginoon sa ating buhay uh, at sa mundong ito in these last days. No? So if we would summarize siguro yung series na yon, it's it, with this statement. Oh, let's read it all together. Ready? Begin. God's Spirit is actively working to accomplish His redemptive plan in these last days. Sabi nga ni Ian Bounds, men are God's method. The church is looking for better methods, but God is looking for better men. Or I would say God is looking for great men. In other words, hindi lang hindi men na lalaki lang, no? men and women. No? Or sabi natin, great believers. Because we have to understand tayo, yung chosen people ng Panginoon to reflect His glory and at the same time accomplish His great plan of redemption in this world. There's no other way. If the church will fail in our responsibility, in our mission, the world will not be able to hear about Jesus Christ. That's our main responsibility. That's the reason why the Lord has chosen us. no? And that's why we need great men and women today in our church. Amen? Because it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, task. No? Make disciples of all nations. We have a great God. Therefore, we need great men and women who would do this great work for our great God. And the good news is that God wants all of us to be great. Amen? God wants you and I to be great in His kingdom. No? And um, kaya ang, ang, ang theme natin ngayon, last year, no, great God, greater things to come. Our theme for this year is greater works for Jesus. Greater works for, for Jesus. No? And last month, ang focus natin, yung tamang perspective, heavenly perspective, since ngayon February ay Month of love, uh, tamang puso naman. A heavenly passion for for the kingdom of God, no? And um, uh, uh, our prayer is that we would have a heart that is destined for greatness in the kingdom of God. Amen? A heart that is destined for greatness in the kingdom of God. Question, do you want to be great in God's kingdom? Really? Do you want, who wants to be great in God's kingdom? Asan ka? Ano? Baka, ano, ano ba yan, no? Pero, yan yung ating pag-aaralan sa series na to, no? Siguro maraming questions. How do we become great? What do we need to be great? Etc., etc., no? But, um, uh, we would focus on that, no, as we continue, as we uh, begin and go on with our series uh, uh, dito sa ating pag-aaral, no? And I invite you to open your Bibles to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. And uh, dito tayo magfo-focus sa ating pag-aaral, Mark chapter 10 verses 35 to 45. Niling ko po ang lahat ng tumayo na bilang paggalang sa pagbasa ng salita ng Panginoon. And basahin natin ang sagutan no, Mark chapter 10 verses 35 to 45. I'll begin with verse number 35. Mark chapter 10 35 to 45. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. They said to him, Grant us that we may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your glory. They said to him, We are able. So Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup that I drink, and with the baptism I am baptized with, you will be baptized. And when the ten heard it, they began to be greatly displeased with James and John.
Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to be great among you shall be your servant. Altogether, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Let's pray. Lord, we once again humbly come before you asking for your illumination. Pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of our hearts so that we would understand your will and the lesson that you would like for us to learn as we study your will. Remove any distraction and we pray that you would speak to us personally. Hide your servant behind your cross, and may you alone be glorified in Jesus name. Mahaka po na po tayo. Okay? So, uh, dito po sa ating series, ay una nating titignan ay yung request for greatness. No? Um, and there are four things that uh, I would like for us to consider as far as the request for greatness is concerned, although we will cover two ngayon pong araw na to, no? Um, so, makikita natin dito sa passage na binasa natin na Particularly, James and John had this request sa ating Panginoong Jesus. And it has something to do with uh, being great in the kingdom of God. Now, some questions that we might ask is this, um, is there something wrong with their request? No? Uh, is, is, was it wrong for James and John to make a request or to think about greatness per se, no? as far as the kingdom of God is concerned? Well, yan at ilang pang mga questions marahil, uh, we will try to answer as we consider uh, our passage. No? But uh, again, we would look into two. umaga. First of all, I would like first to consider the process of the request or the development of the request and then the people behind the request. No? Who made the request particularly as mentioned in our passage. No? So una, tignan po natin yung process ng request na to. Na, na kung saan, uh, I would say that this request made by James and John was not an instantaneous or parang spontaneous request that they made na parang during this time, hindi yung parang bigla na lang pumasok sa isipan ni James and John at naisipin nila, ano kaya itanong natin kay Jesus Christ? Who will be, uh, uh, parang ano, who will be great uh, in His kingdom? Or i-request natin na pag when Jesus Christ reigns and establishes His kingdom na ano, kasama tayo dun sa mga umaga, great men and women na mag uh, reign with the Lord Jesus Christ, no? So, it was not an, uh, yung idea ng greatness sa kingdom ng Panginoon, okay, was actually in the mind of James and John prior to this incident and even in the minds of the disciples. Okay, because when you go to Mark chapter 9, tignan niyo Mark chapter 9, ano? When you go to Mark chapter 9, a chapter before yung Mark chapter 10, ano? At ang kasunod ng Mark chapter 10 ay Mark 11. Okay, so 9. Alam nyo na yun, no? Okay, Mark chapter 9. If you look at verse number 33, look at verse number 33. Sabi dyan, Then he came to Capernaum, and when he, Jesus, was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? So merong ano, dispute amongst the disciples habang sila ay ano, nagtatravel, No? Verse 34, but they kept silent for the ro for on the road they had disputed among themselves what? Who would be greatest? Okay? So ibig sabihin, bago pa lang yung request na ginawa ni James and John, merong konting dispute na okay, amongst the disciples. And it has something to do with what? Being great in the kingdom of God. As a matter of fact, yung word na ginabi dyan, who would be the greatest Okay? in the kingdom of God. No? So prior to this incident here in chapter number 10, no, ay meron na tong idea na to, okay? yung notion of being great in the kingdom of God. And ang, ang ano doon, ang malungkot lang doon is parang sabi yan, may dispute pa. No? So siguro isipin natin, bakit kaya nagkaroon ng dispute? Or why did this idea of greatness arise amongst the disciples and naging dispute uh, amongst themselves no well we have to understand that by this time okay by this time it was very clear to the disciples that Jesus is the messiah okay alam na nila na si Jesus ay, ay messiah as a matter of fact when you go to mark chapter 8 when Jesus asked his disciples who do you think 
Who do you say I am? Anong sagot ni Peter? Who you? <laughs> you are the Christ, no? Chapter 8, verse 29, no? And then when you go to chapter 9, uh, see Peter, James, and John witness the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, na kung saan Jesus showed them a glimpse of His glory. Okay? So, clear sa kanila, oy, si Jesus nga, yung Messiah, na ano, na inaantay natin, no? And not to mention, uh, yung mga miracles that all the disciples witnessed, no? Personally, uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, made them parang fully convinced. And they believe that Jesus indeed is the Messiah. And as the Messiah, anong gagawin niya? Alam nila that Jesus Christ as the Messiah will come and will establish God's kingdom forever. Although, again, remember, no, during that time, the, the disciples had a, a wrong perspective about the kingdom of God. Okay? Kasi ang isip nila during that time, earthly kingdom, establish na kagad ng Panginoon, no? But again, kaya may parables of the kingdom. If you would remember our series, no, no, Jesus had to teach, particularly his disciples, no, that the kingdom that he will establish is not primarily physical, but it's spiritual. Yung physical talaga na kingdom sa ano yon sa second coming na ng ating ating panginoon, no? So, ang problema lang is yung mga disciples during that time hindi nila kagad na intindihan yung concept na to, yung truth na to about um, the kingdom. No? So it took a while for them, as a matter of fact, parang after na ng ascension ng Panginoon, uh, after His death, burial, and resurrection, no? dun lang nag-make sense, kumbaga, yung mga bagay na sinasabi ng ating Panginoon. No? So the disciples during this time had a physical, materialistic view of the kingdom of God. And it resulted into what? Into a physical and also materialistic desire for greatness in the kingdom of God. And makikita natin yan sa request ni James and John. Sabi nga ng isang Bible uh, ng pastor, no, uh, sa kanyang, isa sa kanyang sermon, sabi niya, they love Jesus, no question about that. They love the truth, they believe in Him, they believe in His kingdom, they are saved, they have been regenerated, the Holy Spirit is with them, but what's the problem? During this time, ayan o, they still struggle with pride. And hindi lang basta struggle. During this time na, ano, they struggle greatly and they struggle in a losing fashion. They have a materialistic view of the kingdom, not because of some esoteric distant reality. They have a materialistic view of the kingdom because of their own personal, personal desires for exaltation or for what? for elevation. So, anong nangyari sa mga disciples, parang kubaga parang yung truth, medyo ano, umakit na dito. Uy, toto, ito na nga, Messiah, ito na, malapit na yung kingdom. Kaya, maalala nyo, paulit-ulit, inaas ng disciples si Jesus, Lord, will you at this time establish your kingdom? Ito na ba? Inaantay nila yun eh. Okay? Pero ang problema, okay, ay parang medyo nag-struggle sila with pride and it resulted into them having personal desires for exaltation. Na kung saan ano, they had uh, yung na-establish yung selfish ambitions okay, in the kingdom of God. No? Although, sabi nga, this was not the case probably when they first began. No? Sincere yung kanilang pagsunod sa Panginoon. They were really looking and waiting for the Messiah and they truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. No, So they were sincere in their faith and their service ating sa Panginoon. But as they went along, especially when things are getting clear that this is it, okay, doon na nagkaroon ng, ano, ng struggle. Okay? The struggle ng pride and that desire for self-exaltation started to interfere with their hearts and with their Kasi alam nyo, ang, ang power, malaking temptation talaga. Yung, yung, yung uh, temptation ng, ng power, pag uh, tinake advantage siya ng kaaway, 
pride starts to, you know, we start to struggle with pride. Delicado. No? So they came to a point where they started to what? Think of themselves and the benefits that they would be getting from the Lord when the Lord establishes His kingdom. Bakit? Kasi they were ano? In the circle of Jesus Christ. Ito yung king, kasama namin, disciples kami. Siguro, particularly, James and John, they were part of the inner circle. Diba? Kaya anong sabi nila? They start to think about, oy, what's in it for us? What's in it for me? As a matter of fact, if you go to Matthew 20, yung sabi ni Peter sa Panginoon, Lord, see, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? In other words, what's in it for us? Okay? So, I believe that temptation for power or for greatness um, had been great for the disciples during this time. Um, considering especially that itong mga disciples were just ordinary common men. Anong profession ni Peter, Andrew, James, and John? Fisher. Siguro baka sabi natin, sino ba yung mga great sa mga disciples? Baka siguro si Matthew, kasi tax collector siya, di ba? Although, being a tax collector, he was what? Despised greatly as well by the Jews specifically. So, these men were parang ordinary men, outcast men, ng disciples ng Panginoon. And probably the idea, the thought that Jesus, we are, we are with Jesus, we are his disciples, we're following him, and he's about to establish his kingdom. He would be king. Oy, anong mangyayari sa atin? pag nangyari. Right? So, nagkaroon ng ano? Yung notion or yung idea that they could be great for the first time in their lives and it's in the kingdom of God probably made a very big appeal to the disciples. And, naging ano yun? Naging yung elevation ng sarili, ano, na parang, imagine the king, the kingdom, us disciples, Yung, yung idea probably ng elevation or greatness became very, very appealing to them. And so, they struggle with it probably and nagkaroon ng selfish ambition or selfish desire for exaltation. No? So, yan yung process, ay yung development, kung bakit nag-arise yung question from John, or James and John, no? uh, asking Jesus for a request. No? Now, the persons who made the request. We'll look into that, no? Okay? Because according to Mark, specifically dyan sa passage na binasa natin, James and John were the persons who made the request. Di ba? Now, siguro, knowing the background, no? The question that you might ask is this. Bakit nagkaroon ng confidence si James and John? To ask Jesus. And pag titignan nyo yung request nila, parang medyo hindi, hindi direct kagad yung request eh, parang bata ba na sasabihin, Daddy, say yes to what I will request. Parang inuna muna, nanigurado muna eh, di ba? Say, Lord, will you will you do whatever we ask of you? Parang gano'n, no? Sabi, ano bang gusto nyo? Okay? And then, saka, in nila yung question. No? But, so the question is, why do you think James and John had that confidence to ask Jesus? Well, the answer to this, uh, we, it might give us uh, a light, no? Kung bakit nangyari ito. When we consider Matthew's account, open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 to 22. Because here in Matthew's account, you would notice may another character involved in the request. Okay, sino yung involved dyan? Verse number 20, Matthew 20. Then the mother of Zebedee's son. Sino yung Zebedee's son? James and John. Okay? Came to him, Jesus, with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. Verse 21, He, Jesus, said to her, What do you wish? She, she said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit. Same request, di ba? One on your right hand and the other on your left in your kingdom. Ibig sabihin, ano, hindi lang si James and John yung nag-request during that time. Kasama nila yung kanilang ano, 
nanay. Baka yung nanay pa nila, yung primarily, lumapit sa Panginoon. And then, so, sabi nga dyan, no? Jesus answered, you do not know what you ask for, etc. And then, then they said, no? James and John responded, we are able. Okay? So if you would try to put things together, it's not just James and John, kasama yung kanilang mother. Now, question, sino ba yung mother ni James and John? Asawa ni Zebedee. <laughs> Kasi James and John were sons of Zebedee. Di ba? So asawa siya ni Zebedee. No? Pero yung mother na na-mention dito, in the book of Mark, she was identified, Mark 15.40, as Salome. She was one of the faithful women who were with Jesus during His crucifixion. No? So si Salome. And itong si Salome, according to the Gospel of John, according to John, ay sister ng mother ni Jesus. So, oh, di ba? Parang, so, so, kung, <laughs> ano nga ulit? <laughs> Paano nangyari yun? Okay? So, kung si, yung mother ni James and John, kapatid ng mother ni Jesus, tama ba? Kaano-ano nila si Peter. <laughs> kaano-ano nila, kaano-ano ni James and John si Jesus. So, merong ano? Family. Kapamilya. Kapuso. Okay? So, makita niyo yung connection, no? So, um, since the disciples were starting to discuss about greatness in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, no? And started to have that selfish ambition. James and John, together with their mother, parang took advantage of their relationship, their connection with Jesus Christ. Dispute ni. Ay, gamitin na natin yung connection natin kay Jesus Christ. So, inanahan na nila. Tayo natin, sabi siguro ni James and John, kung may, at nung mother niya, kung merong mang dapat, ano, may, may pwesto sa kingdom ng Panginoon, sino yun? Kayo dapat. Kasi ano, Pinsan nyo yan eh. Pinsan nyo yung king? Eh si Peter, si Dara, kaano-ano nila yung si Jesus? Wala naman, di ba? Kayo? Family. Di ba? So ano makikita natin dito? Yung selfish ambition ay na, 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 ano, nakasamahan ng self-worth. Importansya ng ano, ng sarili nila on the account of their what? Connection or their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, no? So, parang yung idea na if if there should be someone worthy to have, to be great in the kingdom of God, amongst the disciples, it should be who? Sabi nila siguro sa sarila, James and, that's us, James and John, because of our connection or association or family ties with Jesus. We have blood is thicker than Blood, umu, umuugos yung blood ko kanina. So, um, ang nangyari nun, naging focus sila ngayon sa sarili nila and consider the rest of the disciples as if wala silang right. Bakit? Kasi nakita nila, mas worthy tayo. Kasi mas malapit, kumbaga mas may uh, connection, mas malapit tayo sa ating so this is the reason why James and John, together with their mother Salome, had the courage to come to Jesus and make such a bold request to Jesus. No? So, um, yun yung makikita natin um, parang ano, sort of a background on why James and John uh, were able to make such a request sa ating Panginoon. Now, going back to the question earlier, no? Was it wrong for James and John to ask for such greatness in, in God's kingdom, in Christ's kingdom? May, may mali ba doon? Well, I think the answer to that is what? No. Why? Because, if you would notice, no, pag yung binasa nating passage, no, Jesus did not dismiss the idea of being great. In As a matter of fact, sinabi niya, if you want to be great, here's what you need to so in other words, there is that opportunity for us, no, 
to be great in the kingdom of God, no? But such greatness, okay, in 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 God's kingdom should should not be accomplished especially through human standards or qualifications or efforts. May criteria ang Panginoon. And usually ang kingdom ng Panginoon, sabi natin nga counterculture sa ano? Sa sinasabi ng mundo, right? And uh, yun yung pag-aaralan natin, natin later on, no? What does it take to be great in the kingdom of God? Of course, there's humility, servanthood, and actually suffering. We'll look into that later on, but we'll look into the two ay umaga. No? So what was wrong in their request, James and John? It was their heart. It was their intention or motivation for such greatness, no? Na Jesus had to correct their perspective on greatness in the kingdom of God. And ang unang inexpose niya nga, yung sabi natin kanina is yung selfish ambition at yung kanilang idea of self-worth of great for greatness in God's kingdom. Alam nyo, itong dalawang bagay na to, selfish ambition and self-worth are the greatest enemies of greatness in God's kingdom. It's the greatest enemies of greatness in God's kingdom. Self-worth is what? Pride. Self-worth is pride. I'm not talking about yung rightful view or sober view ng value natin in Christ no, because we are all valuable in Christ. No? But uh, ito yung yung human fleshly view of ourselves and especially of others. Na kung saan sabi ni Paul sa Romans chapter 12, it's um, uh, thinking highly of ourselves or thinking lowly of ourselves, not soberly thinking of who we really are in, in Christ. No, this is pride and the Bible clearly says that what? God opposes the proud but He gives grace to the humble. Okay? According to one commentary, selfish ambition pursues personal goals Empty conceit, which is self-worth or pride, seeks personal glory and acclaim. The former pertains to personal accomplishments, the latter to an over-inflated self-image. Understandably, a person with such conceit considers himself always to be right and expects others to agree with him. The only unity he seeks or values is centered on himself. So self-worth or pride says, do you know who I am? Do you know my last name? Or who are you to tell me what, to, what I have to do? Or who, who are you to tell me what is right? I know what to do. And the theme song is, I did it my way. No? If you don't want my way, go away. Right? I don't need you. I, be, I am enough. I can do this. Parang, uh, edi wow. Parang ganun, ano? Self-pride. Selfish ambition naman is pugnacity. Another word, no? New word. Pugnacity is readiness to quarrel or fight. Combative, combative, or argumentative character. It is the attitude and action of elevating oneself or putting one's own interests before or above others to the point of strife and contention. So, selfish ambition disrupts peace and unity. Selfish ambition actually causes quarrels and fights. According to another Bible commentary, selfishness is an inordinate self-love, prompting one for the sake of personal gratification or advantage to disregard the rights or feelings of other men. It is a negative quality that is, it consists in not considering what is due to one's neighbors through a deficiency of justice or Benevolent. So selfish ambition says, this is what I want, I will get it. No matter what the cost. I may hurt you, I may take advantage of you, I might destroy you, but that's okay as long as I get what I want. I will protect and pursue my interest at all costs. So pag tinignan natin to, parang ito yung sinasabi lagi ng mundo para maging successful tayo. Di ba? But as I have mentioned earlier, not in the kingdom of God. It's actually the exact opposite. Pride and selfish ambition are the enemy's great weapons in order to destroy God's people and disrupt God's great work. That's why we have to be very careful because we are all prone to this. Mga disciples nga eh, they struggle with it, no? Tayo, ako, I struggle with it. 
greatly. It's a kumbaga, wrestling match talaga between the spirit and the, the flesh, no? Okay? We are all prone to this. That's why uh, we need yung, yung power, yung spirit ng Panginoon to work in us because apart from Him, we cannot overcome this. No? On the other hand, humility okay, and servanthood is God's ways of raising great men and women. In other words, if we want to be great in the kingdom of God, ito, mahalaga to. Take note of this. Ano yun? Number one, humility. And then pangalawa, servanthood. Actually, ano pag, kumaga, they go hand in hand together, the humility and servanthood. Kaya, if you go to Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4, the Apostle Paul commands us, no? Basahin nga natin, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4, ready? Go. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So, greatness in God's kingdom requires humility and servanthood. There's no other way. We cannot expect great things from God and attempt great things for God if there's pride or selfish ambition. No? Pwedeng sigurong maging parang successful sa tingin ng tao, yung Christian life natin or yung ministry natin, pero pag it's done through selfish ambition or conceit, eventually, you know, it would show. Pero kung hindi man, actually, pagdating natin sa langit, lahat ng ginawa natin, ano mangyari? When it passes through the test of fire, it will burn. In other words, ano, sayang. Walang reward na manggagaling na ibibigay sa atin. Sayang lang. Ha? Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. No? So, uh, yung mga bagay na ginagawa natin, walang spiritual value or significance both in this lifetime and even in eternity kapag it's done with through selfish ambition or conceit pride. On the other hand, we do things for the Lord with humility, in humility, no? and with a servanthood heart, servant heart, serving others, um, uh, over ourselves, uh, putting others first, no? that's when we can start to expect great things from God and great things for, for God. No? Na kung saan yung lahat ng gagawin natin sa Christian life natin, sa ministry ng Panginoon, when we do the work of the Lord, when we do the work of the ministry with humility and servanthood, yung sinabi ng Panginoon, we can be There is greatness in store in God's kingdom. It's only reserved for those who would do His work with humility and servanthood. Now, how can we develop such attitudes? No, a heart of humility and servanthood. No, well, we will continue uh, in our series and learn from. Doon sa sinabi mismo na ating Panginoon from our passage. No? But I would like to close with this. No? Uh, with this quote from Tim Keller. Sabi niya, The Christian gospel is that I am flawed that Jesus had to die for me. Amen? Yet I am so loved and valued that Jesus was glad to die for me. Amen? This leads to what? Deep humility and deep confidence at the same time. It undermines both swaggering and sniveling. I cannot feel superior to anyone, and yet I have nothing to prove to anyone. I do not think more of myself or less of myself. Instead, I think of myself. Naturally, humanly speaking, we're bound to what? Put ourselves first. It's hard to put others first. You agree? 
Pero sabi ng Panginoon, ito yung way ng kingdom. Ito yung way ng greatness sa kingdom ng God. And you know the key for us to be able to 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 be able to do this, no? Go back to the gospel. We go back to Jesus Christ, who He is, and what He has done for us. That we are not worthy. We're not worthy to be here. We can, kumaga, wala tayong pwedeng ipagmayabang. Dahil bakit? Ano? Bakit? <laughs> Kasi ano, lahat naman tayo makasalanan. Amen? The only reason why we are here is because of the grace of God. Because of His greatness. Kaya wala tayong pwedeng ipagmayabang. Kasi if we're, sabi nga ng kanta, were it not for grace, I can tell you where I'll be. Wandering down some kangkung, my salvation is at hand. Wala. Baka nasa papahamak lang tayo. Hindi lang dito, but even for us. Kaya purihin ang Panginoon for His grace. As we always reflect on who Jesus is and what He has done for our lives. No? May that be our driving motivation. Jesus Christ, our perfect example, to live a life of humility and servant. Yung greatness, ano na lang yun? Kumbaga parang, ano, parang aftermath na lang. Parang ano na yun? Hindi, hindi yun yung isipin natin. But i reward yun ng Panginoon. Pero, what we're after for is we're doing this because we love the Lord. We are thankful to the Lord. We're grateful to the Lord for who He is and what He has done. So, huh? Do you want to be great in God's kingdom? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, maraming salamat po sa paalala mula sa inyong salita. A reminder to us that you are a great God, have a great plan for the world. And we are your great people and you desire greatness. It is your will for us to be great in your kingdom. So you can use us greatly for your glory and for your honor. But we must make sure, we, we have to be sure that we do things not out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. There should be no pride, or self-worth or selfishness, selfish ambition sa puso po. Dalangin namin Panginoon we are struggling with this in some areas of our lives or darating man yung time that we would struggle with this. You would cause us to focus not on ourselves but to focus on you. On your grace, on your mercy, and your great love. Na yun yung magiging dahilan kung bakit we will be able to set aside ourselves and humble ourselves before you and before others and serve you and others because we are not worthy. Only you are worthy. We want to do this out of our love for you and out of our gratitude for, your, for saving us, for allowing us to be a part of it. As we continue this study, Panginoon, patuloy kayong kumilos sa puso at isipan namin. Build to us important truths, Panginoon, and work in our hearts. Alam ko, it's a daily struggle for all of us. We know that with you, through your power, through your spirit within us, we can overcome. We will. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are, you're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are this.